Hello and welcome back to the Cosmic Vortex. My name is Troy and in today's video we're breaking down the season finale of WandaVision. In this video I'll break down everything that happened in episode 9 of the show, talk about the conclusion of the entire series and also give my review of it and theorise for the future of the MCU as some very clear hints have been left for future MCU projects. So without any further ado, let's get straight to the finale and break down everything that happened. Let's go. We pick up exactly where we left off in episode 8 of the show, with a fight beginning between both Wanda and Agatha. Agatha releases her grip of both Billy and Tommy, allowing them to walk away and escape before this fight begins, and at which point Wanda and Agatha begin their full-on fight. Wanda tries to fire some bolts at her, but Agatha absorbs every bit of power from them as they're thrown at her. The exact same kind of power we saw from Agatha at the beginning of episode 8. So how does Wanda stop Agatha from absorbing any more power? Well, she throws a car at her. I know, very calm response. But it does work, she throws the car right at Agatha, and it sends her flying through the window of her house. But as Wanda approaches the wreckage, she finds only a pair of boots under the car and Agatha has completely disappeared. At which point we see the arrival of White Vision into Westview. Wanda appears very confused and clearly believes that Vision has been brought back to life and when she tries to approach him, he then starts to crush her skull, with him taunting that he thought Wanda was supposed to be powerful when yet she isn't. But White Vision doesn't get a chance to kill Wanda as our Vision shows up and intervenes, sending him flying. And for reference throughout this episode, because we do have two Visions, I'm going to call Westview Vision just Vision and the White Vision, White Vision, so there's no confusion between who I'm talking about for the rest of this episode. While White Vision is recovering from being sent hurtling, Vision and Wanda have a quick conversation about where the children are, and Vision tells Wanda that he knows everything that's going on. Wanda apologises and says that she can fix everything once the fight is over. At which point, Agatha appears again, and the couple decide to split and fight each of the adversaries individually, so Wanda goes off to fight Agatha, whilst Vision goes off to fight White Vision. And yet, all the while, Monica is trapped in Agnes's attic alongside fake Pietro, or Fietro, however we want to call him at this point. He's holding her hostage and preventing her from escaping the attic, so Monica is not able to join the action just yet. And so we see the fight continue between Vision and White Vision in what is a really, really cool fight sequence. There's only one of several with these two characters, but the one thing I want to pick up on in this fight is that White Vision tries to pull the exact same move that Thanos did on Vision, but fails as Vision has his full control over his density. For those of you who don't remember, in Infinity War, one of the first things that happens to Vision is the Black Order stop him from being able to use his density abilities by using a blade that stops him from phasing, which is what allows Thanos to pick up Vision and pull out the stone without Vision just being able to phase through Thanos and not even let him take the stone. Meanwhile, we briefly leave the fight to see Tyler outside of the hex preparing to enter once he gets a clear signal from White Vision, but they realise that White Vision has engaged Vision and so will not be sending them any signals anytime soon, at which point Jimmy turns up handcuffed. I have to admit, I don't know how Jimmy got to this point, whether he chose to be arrested by him to find out his plan. It's not really explained, which is one of the very small issues I have with this episode, because the last we saw Jimmy, he was with Major Goodner after Monica had run into the hex and he's just suddenly handcuffed at the sword base. But either way, he hears a phone ringing and grabs the phone without Tyler realising, so Jimmy has a way to call for backup. Jimmy threatens that backup is coming, and so Tyler asks for Jimmy to be put away somewhere so he can't interfere, at which point he uses a paperclip to break out of the handcuffs and call for the backup he just threatened Tyler with. Meanwhile, Wanda has now reached the town square, and she's looking around trying to find Agatha when she appears on top of a building, and she reveals the book we saw glowing at the end of episode 7 is in fact the Darkhold book, which she then uses to explain that Wanda is supposedly meant to be a villain that will destroy the world and is more powerful powerful than Doctor Strange himself, the Sorcerer Supreme. Of course, Wanda denies being a villain, says that she doesn't want to hurt anybody, but Agatha then points her to all the people surrounding her, saying that she's hurting all of them and that's not what a hero would do. But to illustrate this, she frees Dottie from Wanda's influence and she heads over to Wanda and begs her to let her daughter out of the house so she can just hold her again. Quite a dark scene when you realise that Wanda is really beginning to grasp what exactly she was doing to all these people. And it gets even worse as Agatha begins to free everyone in the town square, including Herb, Norm, Mrs. Hart, and all of them begin to approach her. Back in the suburbs, Billy is witnessing all of this and telling Tommy as the two of them are inside the house, eventually realising that they need to go and help Wanda and set off to assist her. Whilst next door, Monica does some digging in the attic to find out Evan Peters' character's true identity. No, he isn't Pietro Maximov. No, he's not from the multiverse. He is just, in fact, a regular person. And his name is Ralph. This is our Ralph character that Agatha was talking about all along. Not her husband, just the person who lived in the house that she then took over and put him under her influence. Which really is a little bit disappointing. I have to admit, I really he was hoping he'd be a multiverse Quicksilver and it's a little bit of a letdown that he wasn't. But with everything else going on in this episode, I'll let it slide because there's far more important things happening. Oh, and he's called Ralph Boner apparently. Yeah, moving on. Anyway, Monica then tries to leave the attic, this time successfully pinning down Ralph, swiftly followed by removing the necklace that Agatha had put on Ralph to control his thoughts and actions. After removing it, Ralph basically turns into a quivering mess and Monica gets up and leaves the house. Meanwhile, back in the town square though, the residents are getting closer and closer to Wanda, surrounding her, shouting at her, asking her to free them, until her despair 
releases in a giant scream, which then begins to choke everybody around her accidentally. Wanda realizes what's happening and quickly breaks the spell, and by this point is beginning to clock exactly what Agatha is saying, that she has this power that does exceed that of the Sorcerer Supreme, and she's beginning to realize just how much power she wields. At which point she briefly and partially opens up the hex, allowing all the residents to escape and be free of her influence, which has a knock-on effect to both Vision and the kids, as Vision is still fighting White Vision up in the sky until he eventually begins to break down and plummets back towards the ground. Billy and Tommy both also arrive in the town square next to Vision and they're all beginning to break apart. So after holding it for as long as she can, Wanda then lets the hex heal itself and fully cover everybody again, allowing Vision and Billy and Tommy to recover, stand up and join her for the fight. But whilst the hex was partially open, Tyler took advantage of the situation and mobilised a bunch of sword troops into Westview. And so we find Wanda, Vision, Billy and Tommy surrounded by Agatha Harkness, White Vision and a group of sword soldiers all at the same time. And so each of them break off into their own fight. Billy and Tommy take on the sword soldiers, Wanda fights Agatha, whilst Vision finishes off his battle with White Vision. It does jump from fight to fight in the episode, but what I'm going to do is break down each fight one by one in a more concise manner. So let's start off first with Vision and White Vision. The two of them continue to fight inside of Westview's public library until Vision asks White Vision what his actual purpose is, to which he responds that his programming is to destroy the Vision. At which point Vision explains that he actually isn't the true Vision, and White Vision asks him to elaborate. I'm really going to be saying Vision a lot during this bit, aren't I? The two Visions then have a small debate over the ship of Theseus. The concept of which being an original ship that is put in a museum begins to rot and the wooden planks are over time replaced. And so the question arises of once all the planks are replaced, is that ship truly the original anymore? And conversely, if you then put the rotted planks together to try and make the ship again, is that even the real ship anymore? A clear reflection between both White Vision, who is a construction of the original Vision, but not the same one, and our Westview Vision, who is not the real Vision, but has the similar traits of the original. Both of them conclude that neither of the ships would actually be the original and then deduce that from that, neither of the Visions that are talking right now are the original either. But our Vision convinces White Vision that he is in fact the correct Vision, or at least the most original one, if for no other reason than White Vision actually exists outside of Wanda's mind and the Hex. Vision explains to White Vision that he has all of the memories that the original Vision had pre-Infinity War, but they're being locked away and hidden to him from Sword. So Vision opens up his mind and allows him to see everything that happened from Age of Ultron all the way up to Infinity War, and we see the effect it has on White Vision because his mechanical eyes turn back into human eyes. At which point he states that he is in fact Vision, flies out to the library, and we don't see him again for the rest of the episode. Next up, let's briefly cover Billy and Tommy's fight against the Sword Agents. Billy uses his powers very much like Wanda's to try and stop all of the Sword Agents from moving, whilst Tommy runs around and grabs all of their guns, rendering them completely useless in the fight. Tyler watches all this from a truck, at which point he gets out of the truck and starts shooting at Billy and Tommy. Yes, Tyler is shooting at kids now, I didn't think I could like him any less than I already did, but apparently I can. But luckily, Monica steps in to save both of the children with the bullets flying through her, but stopping and hitting the ground as they pass through her body. She blocks all of the bullets except for one, which Billy blocks himself using his powers. After realising he's powerless, Tyler then tries to get back in the truck and flee, but is swiftly stopped by Darcy, who has turned up in the truck, rammed into him, and stopped him from going anywhere. Concluding the second fight, and allowing us now to focus on the final and biggest one, Wanda vs Agatha. It starts off with Wanda using the nightmare trick on Agatha that she'd originally used on the Avengers in Age of Ultron, putting her back in the execution that we saw at the beginning of episode 8. Agatha panics for a little bit, pretending to be under Wanda's influence before she finally shows that she actually isn't affected by the nightmare, and instead controls it, putting Wanda on the stake instead. At which point, Agatha offers Wanda the ability to keep Vision and the children forever inside of Westview, fix all of the issues with the Hex, and leave her alone, as long as she is able to absorb all of Wanda's magic. Wanda refuses, breaks free of the nightmare, and the fight pursues into the sky. At which point, Wanda starts to actually give Agatha all of her power, continually firing bolts at her, including one at Vision, stopping him from coming up into the sky to join her in the fight. But as the fight proceeds, we see some bolts hit Agatha, and some hit the walls of the Hex, seemingly missing Agatha, but as we find out, it was completely intentional. Because after firing several bolts at Agatha, she eventually then begins to suck all of Wanda's power out of her, seemingly immobilizing her and potentially killing her. But after Agatha absorbs all the power and then reveals to Wanda that she was lying about her little offer she just made her, she then tries to finally finish Wanda off, but realizes she can't cast any spells. At which point it's revealed that Wanda's bolts fired towards the Hex walls were actually her casting runes in the entirety of the Hex, rendering Agatha powerless as Wanda quotes everything that she'd said to her in episode 8 back at her. And the reverse play begins as Wanda begins to absorb every single inch of Agatha's power, in the process giving Wanda her new MCU Phase 4 Scarlet Witch outfit, which might be one of the best outfits in the entirety of the MCU. Seriously, this thing is absolutely fantastic. And the outfit even includes the headpiece, the thing that we originally thought would look too stupid on the outfit, looks perfect on it, and I really, really, really like it. Once the absorption is complete though, her and Agatha descend back to the ground, and Wanda's punishment for Agatha is to transform her into Agnes permanently, allowing her to live out the role of the nosy neighbour for as long as Wanda pleases. It's worth noting that Agatha suggests 
to Wanda that she has unleashed something that Wanda won't be able to control and says that Wanda will actually need Agatha's help but Wanda says that if she does need her she knows where to find her and so Agatha becomes Agnes once again this time permanently allowing Wanda to reunite with her family with all of their adversaries beaten. There's a brief discussion between Vision and Wanda at which point Vision says that he knows Wanda's about to fix everything but not for them hinting as to what's about to happen in the next few minutes and so the couple and the children head back to their house as the hex begins to shrink allowing Westview to return to normal. It's done quite slowly however allowing Wanda and Vision to first put the children to bed in their house as once the hex closes both of the children will no longer exist. Wanda does have a couple of choice closing remarks one being that a family is forever and that they could never truly leave each other even if they tried and then as she leaves the room with Vision she says to them thank you for choosing me to be your mom. At which point I completely broke down crying and even more so when I was watching this again to take notes. And the waterworks really don't stop there because Wanda begins to turn off every light in the house accepting what's about to happen to her family but Vision turns one light back on allowing them to have a final goodbye. The closing of the hex is now within their sight and so Vision's final question to Wanda is to explain what exactly he was in all of this and she says that he was the piece of the mind stone that lived in her, her sadness and her hope but mostly he was her love. At which point Vision starts crying and yeah I was too. This is such an upsetting scene, it's so well done and as I'll talk about shortly considering that we know another Vision is still alive and will come back at some point, the fact that this Vision is going to die probably shouldn't have upset me as much as it did but it really really did. Speaking of which though, one of Vision's final lines to Wanda is who knows what I might be next. A clear hint that he knows that Wanda won't be truly alone as White Vision will eventually return to her and the couple will be reunited. The hex then closes in on the house as Vision disappears in front of Wanda, returning everything to the way it was in episode 8 when Wanda had first arrived at the plot of land with no house. And so Wanda starts to make her way out of Westview, walking through the town square with all of the residents staring at her quite uncomfortably. She comes across Monica who attempts to reassure her by saying they'll never know what you sacrificed for them, but Wanda knows that even if she did try to explain, they wouldn't understand and would still fear her and to an extent hate her. Monica says that she doesn't hate Wanda, instead saying that if she had Wanda's powers, she would have brought her mum back in the same way that Wanda did with Vision. And so Wanda apologises for what she did to Monica and then says that she doesn't understand her power yet, but she will, transforming back into her outfit and flying away from Westview, leaving it behind for good. And thus concludes episode 9 of WandaVision. Well, okay, yeah, I've done this teasing thing before. There's two end credit scenes. Let's break them both down. The first one's set inside of the town square where Jimmy is now in charge of cleanup, sorting out the remains of all the fights that have just happened in this episode. An agent then appears in front of Jimmy and Monica saying that they are asking for Monica inside of the theatre, but when Monica reaches the theatre, she finds nobody in there. Initially confused, she then sees the agent turn into a scroll in front of her who says that an old friend of Monica's heard she'd been grounded and would like to meet her up in space. Cutting off there, allowing the credits to continue until we get to the second credit scene. And in this one, we find Wanda in a log cabin in the middle of nowhere, making herself a drink, looking quite calm, relaxed away from all the chaos and people of Westview. But the camera eventually pans round into the bedroom to find that Wanda in her Scarlet Witch outfit is in her astral form, whilst a rearrangement of the Doctor Strange theme plays in the background as Wanda is reading The Dark Hold. And whilst reading it, she hears Billy and Tommy crying out to her in the distance. At which point the scene ends too, meaning that we really have reached the end of episode 9 of WandaVision. And so thus concludes the first season of WandaVision and probably the only season. I've seen some people suggesting that maybe WandaVision might get a second season in the way that Loki has been confirmed to be getting a second one. I don't really know. I'm not sure they could pull off another season like this because the whole point of WandaVision was the mystery of who started the hex, who is this vision, where have the children come from, who is Agnes, who's controlling everything. All of those themes were so integral with the show itself, not just this first season, that I don't think I'd want to see a second season. But that being said, I wouldn't say no to seeing more of both Wanda and Vision, so if there is a second one coming, you won't hear any complaints from me. But let's talk a bit more about that finale. Now I'm going to do things a bit differently this time in terms of my order. Normally I break down the episode and the theories first and then give my score at the very end. This time I'm going to give my score and then do some theories because they're for the wider MCU rather than this show. So for me this episode was absolutely phenomenal. It was a great closer, some really serious Marvel action. Vision is alive in some capacity. Wanda is finally the Scarlet Witch with her new outfit as well as clear evidence that WandaVision will be soon tying into Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. There's only a couple of small issues I have with this episode in particular Jimmy turning up handcuffed with no explanation and also Evan Peters not being the Quicksilver, but that's my own fault for theorizing that he could have been someone else. So I can't really blame the show on that one. Nothing really here to stop me from giving this episode a 10 out of 10. It's a clear mark. It deserves it. It was a fantastic finale to a really stellar series. But let's talk now about some wider MCU theories and just some general thoughts I have for the future of the MCU. Let's start off first with Monica and the Skrull. So the person that Monica supposedly knows, an old friend, could be one of two people. It could be Talos or it could be Nick Fury. Now we know both of those are going to appear in the Secret Invasion Disney Plus series coming in 
2022, I believe. So it could be either one or both of those, but we did also see that Nick Fury was on a sword ship in space, away from all of the action, and so he actually is in space and could meet Monica halfway, so we know that he's around there. So I'm willing to bet that it's Nick Fury, but it could also be Talos. I don't know. It's going to be either one of them. And my second and final discussion is a more open thing, discussing the future of Wonder Vision and Doctor Strange and the rest of the MCU. And the main question that arises is, how is WandaVision going to tie into Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness? As I said, in the end credit scene, we heard Doctor Strange's theme rearranged, playing in the background whilst Wanda was reading the Dark Hold, but she heard Billy and Tommy crying out. And so my theory here, and this is my big grand thing that's going to lead into Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, I believe that Wanda is going to use some of this power that she has to reach into the multiverse, pull out Billy and Tommy from an alternate universe to bring into this reality, and in doing so, open up the multiverse for Doctor Strange to deal with alongside her. I'm not really sure how else Billy and Tommy could exist unless she tries to create them again using these hex powers that she used to create the hex itself, but I just think there's got to be a reason for Wanda to link into this film. So yeah, I think that Billy and Tommy are alive in some other universe, and Wanda is either going to rescue them, pull them out, kidnap them, whatever she decides to do, and that will put her firmly on Doctor Strange's radar, meaning the two will face off or team up or a bit of both in Doctor Strange's second film in just a year's time. But that, however, doesn't account for the final piece of the board, Vision. As I said, why Vision realised he was the true Vision, or at least the closest to the true Vision we'll have right now, and he just flew off out the library, right through the ceiling, and we never saw him again. I imagine he's going to take some time to get used to all of the data that Vision put in his head, and at some point I imagine he will reunite with Wanda in whatever capacity, but I am hoping that because Wanda is playing a big part in Doctor Strange 2, that Vision might at least appear to a certain extent. So far, we knew that Doctor Strange 2 was filming in London, and whilst Elizabeth Olsen was in London doing interviews and press for Wonder Vision, Paul Bettany was in LA in his house. So Paul Bettany might not be on the London set, but that doesn't mean he isn't in the film because it's unlikely they'll film in just one place for the entire film. They may go into some studios to film some certain scenes and that could be where Vision turns up. Either way, I will happily best that Vision will pop up in some capacity, either in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness or at some point later in Phase 4 of the MCU. But that concludes the final breakdown for WandaVision on the Cosmic Vortex. Thank you all so much for watching. It has been an absolute blast to break down all of these episodes, theorise on them, talk about them in more detail. There might be a slight name change coming up before I start doing videos on the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which might not be breakdown so much. I'm not sure what I'll do with that yet. Stay tuned and I'll have some content coming out for that. But there is another channel out there that I've recently discovered called The Cosmic Wonder, which is very, very popular. And I don't want my name to be too similar to that. Please know that it's still me, still the same channel. I just want the name to be more unique. But either way, thank you all so much for watching. I will see you all very soon with some brand new content. Next week, I'm going to plan on doing a Doctor Who video. I'm not sure what I'll do, but I'd like to do something a bit different while we wait for Falcon and the Winter Soldier to arrive. So look forward to that next week. But until then, thank you all so much for watching. It has truly been a blast to break down all these episodes. But either way, I will see you all next week with a brand new video. Until then, look after yourselves, stay safe, and thanks for watching The Cosmic Vortex. See you soon.